Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for viewing this webinar. Uh, today we'll be talking about um, some of the DuPont Ball Library's resources that are going to be most useful for um, graduate students in education programs. My name is Grace Koletsky, and I am one of the librarians at the DuPont Ball Library. If you have any follow-up questions about anything I'm going to be talking about today, or if you'd like um, some individual assistance with your research, you are more than welcome to contact me. My phone number and email address are here on the screen. Um, below that, I have some um, contact information for our Ask a Librarian service. So that's just another, um, another way that you can get specialized research help. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute. So um, the goals of this webinar are um, I'm, I'm hoping to um, help you all understand how to use library sources, library databases to find the sources you need, use a citation management tool called RefWorks to save, organize, and cite those sources, and understand where and how to get help with your research projects. So here's uh, my agenda for this webinar. I'm putting this up on the screen so that those of you who are viewing this as a recording will know, you know, exactly where you need to jump to um, in the recording to get to any particular section that you're most interested in. So we'll start off by talking about some DuPont Ball Library services for graduate students. Then I'll show you how to set up an account with RefWorks, which is that tool you can use for managing citations. Then I'm going to talk about some specific databases and um, how to use those databases efficiently. And finally, I'll wrap up by showing you how to find out if the library has a specific book or a specific periodical. So everything I'm going to show you today, you can access via the library website. Um, and you can get there just by going straight to stetson.edu slash library. Or if you Google Stetson University, library, it's probably the first or one of the first results that will come up. So bear with me just a moment while I close out of this and open up um, the library website. Okay, so this is our home page, and this is where you can find information about everything I'm going to talk about today. But what I want to direct your attention to first is um, at the top of the screen, you see this gray bar with different menus, and the first menu on the left is labeled services. And you'll see that um, the fourth option down is labeled library services for graduate students. So if you open up that page, it will take you to a list of resources related to access and borrowing and research help that are going to be most useful for you as a graduate student. So I'm not going to talk about every single uh, service on this list, but I will point out a few of them. So first of all, um, we have information about access from off campus. Um, you can access all of our electronic resources, whether that's um, our online databases, electronic books, electronic journal articles from anywhere you are in the world. All you need is your Stetson University username and password and that is the same login information that you would use to get into my Stetson or Blackboard or your email or just about everything else. Um, I recommend uh, once you start doing library research um, go ahead and start by logging into my Stetson and then click on resources and then click on library databases from that page and you'll be able to go ahead and search all the databases and have access to full text articles without having to go back and then log in once you find something you want. But you can find all that information here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is our interlibrary loan service. This is a service you can use to request articles or books that the DuPont Ball Library does not have. So if you've come across something that you'd really like to use for your research, but we don't have access to it here, you can just fill out one of the forms on this page. I'll click on the form to request articles so you can see it. Um, so you'll start by filling out uh, your contact information and then filling out the um, information about the source that you want and hit submit and then we will um, 
try to find that source for you for another library and have it sent here for you and that's something that is completely free for you. Um, next I'll point out a couple of things in the research help section of this library services page. The first link here will take you to our research guides. I've opened in a new tab here. These are basically online tutorials and guides to doing research on specific topics that um, the librarians um, here at Stetson have put together. And you can see that they are arranged by subject. So I'm going to scroll down to education and you can see the research guides that are going to be most useful for education. So right here we have um, a guide to teacher education resources. And this is going to be a page of resources um, where, you know, it might be a good place to start looking if you're not sure exactly where to find a specific piece of information. So on the left here, we have a page on databases, a page on reference sources, a page on web resources, a page on teaching tools and resources, and a couple of other things. Um, another database, I mean, another research guide on this list I want to point out is the ERIC database tutorial. Um, ERIC is one of the databases I'm going to be talking about today, but if you need a review or um, you want to learn some more about its more advanced features that we're not going to be going into, this research guide is a good place to start. Um, the next thing I want to show you under research help is the Ask a Librarian service. Um, the uh, library here at Stetson has um, a librarian who is actually on call between all the hours listed on that on this page here. So that's between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, um, and then some availability on the weekends as well. If you call or text the number right here, 386-747-9028, or um, email, this email address, libref at stetson.edu. During these hours, you'll get um, an answer to your question pretty quickly, um, either instantly or, or within just a few minutes if we're already helping someone else. So this is a really quick and easy way to get an answers to any questions you have about doing research or using the library. And then finally, I'll show you how to schedule a research consultation. This is a service you can um, use when you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a librarian to discuss your research project and to discuss the strategies and resources that are going to be most useful for your information needs. Um, so when you want to do that, you can just fill out this form, give us a few days or times you'd like to meet, um, tell us a little bit about your project, and then let us know if how you want to meet with us. So we're available to meet in person, over Skype, or over the phone. So whatever works for you, uh, we, can, we can make it happen. Okay, I'm going to go back now to the library homepage. And now I want to direct you to the center of the page here. You'll see um, a box in the middle of the page that has several different tabs. And I am going to click on the tab labeled databases. And um, you'll see we have an option to filter databases by subject or browse databases by title. I'm going to click on browse databases by title so you can see there's a list here of 237 different databases that the um, library subscribes to. So there is quite a wide variety of search tools that you have access to through us. Um, of course, you know, if you already know what database you want to use, you can search using the search box in the upper right hand corner here, or you can um, jump to a specific point in the alphabet using the letters at the top of the page. Um, if you're not exactly sure where to start, look in the upper left hand corner and you'll see the drop down menu labeled all subjects. And if you click on that, you can choose a subject that you think is most appropriate for the research project you're doing. And most of the time for um, education graduate students, that list of education databases is going to be the best place to start. So we have got 16 databases here that are useful for education researchers. 
Um, like I said, I am only going to be talking about four of them today for the sake of time, but I am more than happy to answer any specific questions or general questions that you have about any of the other resources. Um, I'll point out that we have site licenses to the Chronicle of Higher Education as well as to Education Week. So if you want to use any of these websites, I recommend getting to them through this page because then um, you will automatically have access from off campus. Once you click on that link, you would have an opportunity to log in with your sets and username and password. And then you'll have full access to all the content on the site. So you can see um, next to some of these articles, there's a green check and it says pre premium. Um, that means that this is one that uh, normal you know, users browsing the web would have to pay to have access to, but that's something the library pays for for you. So you will have completely free access to both of those sites as long as you get to them through this page. And the same for Education Week, too. Okay. So before we um, really dive into the databases I want to talk about today, I'm going to go back to the library homepage one more time. And um, at the top of the page, again, in this gray bar, I'm hovering over the menu labeled Research Help. And I can see that the second to the last um, option in this menu is RefWorks. I'm going to click on that and it will open up this page that says making research easier sign in to use RefWorks. So once again, this is um, a web based tool that you can use to store citations that you're finding in different databases. So when you find something in Eric or Google Scholar or even just something random that you found on the web, you can, with just one click, send that into your RefWorks account and basically build a collection of sources from all different places that are just what you want to read. And then you can ultimately use that to generate your Works Cited page. This is another thing that the library provides, so you do have free access to it, but you'll have to sign up for an account before you can start using it, and you can do that. Um, by clicking on create account, this white text right here. Um, and then you'll have to use your stetson.edu email address to sign up. You'll you know, choose your password and then you'll get um, an activation link in your email. And after you log into your email and click on that link, you will be ready to start using RefWorks. So it's really easy to sign up, but I am you know, happy to help anyone, help walk anyone through that process if it's needed. Um, but I already have an account, obviously, so I'm going to go ahead and log in from this page. My email is already here. There's my password, and I click on sign in. And here I am. So once you log into your account for the first time, you'll see a page that looks a lot like this, except you won't have all of these sources in your account that I have already added to mine. So I'm actually going to close out of this for now and we'll be coming back to it throughout the class today. Okay, so I am returning once again to the list of 16 education databases and the first one I would like to show you is called Education and Video. So I'll scroll down to the E's here and click on Education and Video. Um, as you can probably guess, this is a database that just has video content. Um, it has a wide variety of things, um, such as um, videos, like actual video footage of teachers and students in the classroom, documentaries, lectures, demonstrations, lots of different things. You can um, search for a particular topic that you're interested in, or you can use these tabs right below the search box to browse. So um, you could browse by field of interest. You could browse by person. Um, I'm going to go back to educational topics. This is the tab that it defaults to. Um, and I'll click on, let's say, classroom management. And now I can see a list of the 348 databases, I mean, 348 videos that are in some way about classroom management. 
Um, so now to narrow this down a little bit more, I can use the search box at the top of the page to search within these results if I would like to. Um, I can use the filters on the left hand side to narrow it down further by grade level, by educational topic, by date published or released or whatever it is that I want to see. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this first video in the search results so you can see um, what you can do with this. So here is our video. I'm going to pause that. Uh, so we could, you know, just go ahead and start watching this online. If you look on the right hand side, um, we have some tabs at the top of the page next to the video. Um, this tab that it's set to is segment. So if I wanted to jump to a particular segment in the video, I could easily do that. Um, to the left of that is a tab labeled transcript. So here I can just go ahead and start reading the transcript of the video. Um, and if I see something in here that I want to jump straight to, I can just click on the sentence and it will go ahead and take me to the place in the video where they're actually saying that. Um, to the left of transcript, we have details. So this is where you can get a little bit more information about what this video is and who created it. And then finally, the last option on the right here is labeled related documents. And this is where we can download a PDF file of supplemental materials. Um, what this actually includes is different with different videos, but it might be things like a transcript of the video, a list of questions for discussion, some background information, a wide variety of things might be in here. Um, so next, I will look underneath the video and you'll see I can, um, I have some options here in the bottom right hand corner in the gray bar. Um, I can use this scissors icon to make a clip of the video. So if I only wanted to save, you know, 30 minutes, 30 seconds of it or a couple of minutes of it, I could do that. Um, or I could bookmark a certain position in the video if I would like to, you know, stop watching it and then go back and watch it at the exact same place later. Um, to use both of those features, you will actually have to make an account inside the database and you can do that in the upper right hand corner by clicking on user profile and then create new account. Um, this is not something that's automatically going to work with your Stetson username and password, but um, it's something that's, you know, free since the library provides this database. If you'd like access to those additional features, you can make that new account and free for free. Okay, I can go to this page one more time and show you the options for saving the video. So um, right below we have these options in the blue text right here. Um, one of them says send to mobile, so you can actually text yourself a link to the video. Um, the second from the left one says email, so you could also email yourself a link to this video. Um, I'm going to click on the one labeled site. And you'll see here on the left, here are my options. So I could actually choose one of these citation styles. So maybe you're working with APA. You can check on APA, and it will give you um, an APA style citation that you can copy and paste into your paper. Uh, but what I'm going to do is um, click on the option here labeled export list. And now I can choose to send this citation to any of these um, citation management tools. And today we're working with RefWorks, which is the second to the last option listed here. And I'll click on Send. And now it's asking me which version of RefWorks I would like to export to. The black and orange version of RefWorks is the old version and it's going to be phased out at some point in the near future. So um, today we are working with the blue version of RefWorks. So I will click on that icon and it's taking me back to my RefWorks account. You do not have to be logged in to make this work. If you are not logged in, it would just take you to a page where you could log in and it would do the same thing. It would go ahead and import the source that you wanted from education and video. So I click on OK.
and here's a it's taking me to a list of my most recently imported citations and the one that I added just a few seconds ago from education and video is at the top and if I click on that I can get some more information about it on the right here um, what I'm gonna do to try to stay organized is put this in a folder which I can do by checking on a checkbox to the left of my citation and hover over this folder icon at the top of the page and I can add it to a, a folder that I've already made or I can make a new folder which I will do now by clicking on create and I'll just call this one education example create folder and now I see on the left under my folders education example um, is one of the folders listed and I will put all of my sources that I'm finding today in this one folder okay so that's pretty much it for education and video so I'm going to close out of this tab and go back to our list of education databases the next one I want to show you is called Eric and that's actually listed first under best bets at the top of the page uh, that's the best bet because this is the best place to get scholarly literature on education topics so if you are looking for a scholarly journal article or a scholarly book or an educational report uh, a conference paper, a dissertation, anything um, that was sort of written in a scholarly world, Eric is going to be the best place to search for that. So um, you'll see that we have search boxes at the top of the page here. And as I scroll down, I have a number of different filters I can use to go ahead and shape my search. So if I knew that I only wanted to see content that was written for a specific audience, I could select the audience here under intended audience um, in the bottom right hand corner. And just above that is a filter for educational level. So if I know I'm only interested in, you know, second graders or high schoolers or something like that, I can choose that demographic from those from this list here. But what I'm going to do right now is use the search box at the top of the page and I am just going to do a search for bullying and hit the green search button. And now I've got a list of nearly 4,000 different sources that are somehow about bullying or have the word bullying somewhere in the title or the abstract. So obviously, you know, nearly 4,000 sources is too many, and many of these are probably going to be irrelevant for whatever research topic you might be doing. So in order to narrow that down, I'm going to utilize the second search box here and type another keyword into the search box. So let's say you're interested in researching bullying towards um, LGBTQ students. So I'm just going to put LGBTQ here in the second box and click on search again. So that took me down from 3900 results to 64 results. Um, I have a feeling that there are more than 64 sources that are about bullying towards LGBTQ students. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to think of some synonyms or some broader or narrower terms or similar words to bullying and to LGBTQ. So instead of bullying, we might say cyberbullying or harassment or something like that. And one nifty thing about Eric is um, if you type the word or after your keyword, it's actually going to do some of that thinking for you. So I see here um, I can go ahead and just click on this option that it suggested for me to search for bullying or cyberbullying or harassment. And I'm going to do the same thing here for LGBTQ. So next to LGBTQ, I'll say or, and I've got a lot of other different um, you know similar terms that I can easily put in here just by clicking on that so once again I'm gonna hit the search button and that's taken me from 64 results up to 431 so that's a little bit better of a range to choose from 
Uh, still, we want to narrow it down, though. So let's say you are interested in um, bullying towards LGBTQ students, and you're specifically really just interested in middle school. So I'll use, use this um, third search box here, and this time I'll type in middle school, and let's try or so I can, you know, say middle school or junior high or sixth grade or seventh grade or eighth grade. So that's taken me down again to 43 results. So now I'm looking at only 43 articles, but these are specifically ones that are about bullying towards LGBTQ uh, students in middle school. We can also use the options on the left-hand side of the page here under Refine Results to narrow down the type of sources that we're looking at. So right now you can see um, we have the publication date range. Among these 43 sources, um, they were all published between 1989 and 2016. And maybe you are not really interested in what they were saying in 1989. So I'm going to replace this with 2010, or you, know, you can put in here whatever you think is appropriate for your research. And so that's taken me taken out uh, several here. Now I'm down to 32 results. And you could continue narrowing this down if you need to. So if you only wanted to see, you know, academic journals or educational reports, you can limit by source type. You can also, you know, limit by language or subject. Um, this can be really handy when you're trying to figure out, you know, the spectrum of what what kind of subjects are included here. So if you click on show more under subject, you can see out of these 32 sources, um, 18 of them are tagged with social bias, uh, 13 are tagged with school safety, uh, 8 of them are tagged with gender issues, and several other different things. So let's say you're happy with the search results that you're looking at here. Um, to find out more information about a particular source, you can just click on the title. And that'll take you to a page where you can view the, you know, the source, the authors, the abstract, some other basic information about the article. And once you're ready to read it, you can look in the upper left-hand corner under this icon that says detailed record and most of the time there will be a blue link here. What this blue link says is going to be different in different databases but this one says linked full text so I know that once I click on this it should take me to a page where I can go ahead and download the PDF right from this page. Let's see if we can find another one that says something different. So number two, um, let's click on it and open it up under detailed record. This says full text finder. So that means that um, the library might or might not have access to this whole article, but the PDF is not stored in ERIC like the last one was. So I can find out how and where I can access this article just by clicking on this link that says Full Text Finder. A new tab should open. And sometimes it'll load, sometimes you'll have to look in the upper right hand corner of the screen where it says blank screen, launch full text in a new window. So I can just click on that link. And another new tab opens, and here I can go ahead and read this article online from this page or go ahead and download it as a PDF right here. Other times, um, like with number four right here, we don't have a link under detailed record that is going to take us to the full text of the article. But if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's a section labeled availability and there is a link in that section. And you can just click on that link and it's taking you to eric.gov. And I'll see in the upper right hand corner, I can download the PDF from this page.
Other times there might not be a link in either place and that means that you will need to um, do a little bit more um, detective work to figure out if the library has it or not. So number five here is a dissertation, which I can see because next to source it says this is an EDD dissertation. Um, and there is not a link up here and there is not a link down here in the bottom that's going to take us to any sort of full text access. Um, so I can copy the title and I'm going to go back to this databases page and I am going to go back to all databases. I'm going to leave the education database section and I'm going to search for our disser dissertation database called dissertation abstracts. So I'll click on that and paste the title of that dissertation here. And um, it looks like it's getting a little bit confused by this, by these special characters. So I'm going to take those out and see if that helps us. OK, it looks like this is the same dissertation. Um, and because it says download previews and order a copy in the upper right hand corner, that means that I can't read the whole thing online for free, but I can request this through interlibrary loan if I would like to. So I could go ahead and preview it from this page. And if I decide that I need the whole thing, I would go back to the Grad Student Services page on the library website and click on interlibrary loan. And I can use this form to request dissertations to request access to, to this one. OK, I'm going to show you one more thing with um, this record and Eric. Um, so I clicked on another random um, article. And on, on the right hand side, um, you, you'll see that there's a tools menu here. And the fourth option from the bottom says export. If I click on that, It'll open up an export manager, and the third bubble from the bottom in this menu says direct export to RefWorks. So I'll click on save. And once again, a new tab will open asking me which version of RefWorks I want. Um, like I said, we're working with the blue one. I click on OK. Here is a link to the article I just saved. I'm going to click on that again, and you'll see in this panel on the right, there should be a link in the bottom. So under URL, there's a link here. And if I click on that, that will take me straight back to the, the page that I added it from in um, Eric, except unfortunately that URL didn't seem to work. But um, if you have it saved, you could just copy and paste the title and put it back in Eric to find it again. So I'm going to check on the box to the left of this source and then click on my folder icon at the top of the page again and add it to my education example folder by clicking on apply. Okay. Finally, um, one last thing I want to show you in Eric, and that is how to make an account. So just like with education and video, there are some additional features in Eric that you'll have access to if you sign up for an account. And once again, that's something that's free. Um, if you want to do that, you'll look in the upper left-hand corner at this blue bar and click on the link that says Sign In. And you can create a new account um, by clicking on this link. And in the future, you'll just be able to log in right here. Um, doing that will open up um, options for you to set up email alerts. So if something else is added to Eric that would meet your search terms, they will actually send you an email. And you can do that by clicking on Share and then Email Alert right here. Um, you can also save your searches. So if you, you know, came up with all the right filters and all the right keywords, um, and you don't want to have to, you know, 
try to come up with everything again, you just want to have it saved, you can click on search history at the top of the page. Um, and we'll see all the searches here that we did since the browser window has been open. And we can check the box next to the ones that have been saved. And as long as you're logged in, um, you'll be able to just go straight back to the search history again. Okay, so that's it for Eric. I am going to move on to the next database now, which is called Teacher Reference Center. So I'm going to get out of this dissertation search page here. And go back to my list of education databases. And I'll scroll down to the T's this time and click on Teacher Reference Center. So this should look familiar to you because as you can see, it's the exact same interface that we were working with in ERIC and that's because the same database vendor, um, a group called EBSCOhost, provides us with access to both of these databases. Um, so it looks the same, but the content that you'll find in here is actually going to be different. So where ERIC um, focuses on scholarly literature, Teacher Reference Center focuses on literature for professionals. So if you want to see, um, you know, articles from magazines or trade journals that are actually written for teachers or administrators, Teacher Reference Center is going to be the place to search for that. Um, you probably will find some, you know, scholarly journal content in here, just like you might find some magazine content in ERIC. It's not necessarily going to be 100 percent um, in either database, but this is generally what it's going to focus on. So um, you can search it the exact same way that we searched ERIC. So I'm going to do the same search here, bullying or cyberbullying or harassment, LGBTQ, et cetera and then middle school, et cetera. And this one usually has a lot less content in it, so we've, we're only getting 14 results here. Um, and if you scroll down onto the left, you'll see seven of them are magazines. So we could jump straight to those by checking on that checkbox. But other than that, all of the features and functionality are exactly the same as what you're getting in ERIC. So um, I won't spend any more time on this. Okay, next database I want to show you, and this one is actually a collection of databases, is the Florida Electronic Library. The Florida Electronic Library is um, a collection of several dozen different databases that are actually provided um, by the state of Florida. So this is something that all Florida residents have access to and then all students at Stetson also have access to it. I am going to click on subjects at the top of the page. And you can see, you know, you could go straight to education or whatever subject that you're interested in. Next, I'm going to click on grade levels at the top of the page. And now I see my categories here, elementary school, middle school, high school, and teachers. So if I want to see out of all of the Florida Electronic Libraries databases, which ones are appropriate for elementary school students' needs, these two are going to be most useful. And um, there are a lot more for the other three categories. So I'll click on middle school now so you can see all of the databases that might be useful or appropriate for middle school students. Like research and context is created specifically for middle schoolers. And I'll click on the one labeled teachers. So all the databases in this list are going to have really specific things that they're useful for, like books and authors is going to be useful for finding, um, you know, reading material. Um, Library of Congress teacher resources might be helpful in lesson planning. Florida Memory Classroom might be helpful for, you know, history projects. And so on and so forth.
Okay, so finally, um, the last thing I promised to talk about um, is figuring out how to find a specific book or periodical at the DuPont Ball Library. So in order to do that, I'm going to leave this database list and go back to the library homepage. To find a book, you'll want to use the catalog, and that is the second tab from, this, from the left on this box in the middle of the library homepage. If you're looking for a specific book, you can just type the title in right here. So um, let's say Brilliant Activities for Reading Comprehension. And I can change this to title and hit search. And it looks like we do have this book. So I can click on the title to figure out where I can find it. This one is actually an ebook because I know um, under material right here it says ebook. And I can read this online by clicking on URL right here. So I could go ahead and read this whole book online in the web browser if I want to. Um, I can also download or print out a certain percentage of the pages. You can't, you know, print out the whole book, but um, it looks like for this particular book, we could copy 21 pages or print out 42 pages or download one chapter. If you would like to read the entire book offline, you can do that if you download software called Adobe Digital Editions. That's something that's free, but download that to your device, and then you can, um, basically check out this book for 14 days um, and you would have it to read offline on your device. Once the 14 days are up, it'll just disappear. In order to find out if the library has a specific periodical, so a specific scholarly journal or magazine or newspaper, you would use the journal list, which once again is in this box in the middle of the library homepage and I clicked on the tab labeled journals list. So here you can just type in the title of the periodical that you're looking for. So maybe you want to you want to find out if we have access to educational leadership. Um, it looks like we do. So to figure out how and where I can access this, I'll click on the blue uh, link that says full text access and it gives me a list of places where I can get to educational leadership. So um, this first database listed here, Academic One File, only has educational leadership issues published between February 93 and September 98. Um, the next one, Academic Search Complete, has coverage from 1974 to the present. So this is going to have a lot more content in it than the first one did. So these dates right here are really important to pay attention to. And it looks like most of them have, you know, some different coverage here. Um, if you look under library has print, we actually do have the most two, the two most recent years of issues available in print. So if you prefer that, um, we have it that way. But we do have the best coverage in academic search complete. So I'm going to click on that link to open this page. And it's taking me to um, a list of publication details about the periodical. And on the right-hand side, I can filter by year to find a specific issue. So if I want to look at the most recent issue of educational leadership, I can click on 2017. And here's volume 74, issue 5, February 2017. And now I can go ahead and read online or download as a PDF any of the 25 articles published in that issue. And once again, it's the same interface here that we have for Eric, our Teacher Reference Center, but you'll see at the top that this is actually something different called Academic Search Complete. Okay, so before I let you go, I'm going to show you one more thing in RefWorks. So I will open RefWorks again by going to refworks.proquest.com. And I'm going to jump to my 
education example folder and show you how to create your bibliography. So you can click on select all or check the box next to the sources you want to cite. And then in the upper left hand corner, click on the quotation mark icon. And the first option here says create bibliography. And there's your work cited page. You can easily change the citation style you want to work with um, in the upper left hand corner. It's set to APA for me because that is the most recent citation style that I use, but there are tens of thousands of citation styles to choose from in here. So if the one that you want is not appearing in here, you can search for it. Um, I'll just click on MLA to show you that it does automatically update your citation style to meet the new format. Um, and then I can click on copy to clipboard to copy and paste this into my paper. So that's everything that I had to show you today. Um, I just want to reiterate one more time before um, I end the webinar that if you have any questions about libraries or research or anything like that, please um, don't hesitate to use the Ask a Librarian service or to contact me directly because we'll be more than happy to help you. Okay, that's it. So have a great day.